Lowell Thomas speaking, this time about the Straits of Mackinac in Michigan, because I'm a bridge fan. No, not the card game. I mean the kind of bridge that is built with steel and sweat and the genius of American engineers. In all my years of running around the world, I have detoured a lot of miles to see famous bridges. And it's not mere national pride speaking when I say that our own country can boast more beautiful bridges than any land in the world. I've been in Alcantara, Spain, where one of the oldest bridges in the world spans the Tagus River, built in 98 AD. That's almost 19 centuries ago. Soon I'll be journeying back to Mackinac to see the newest, the world's longest suspension bridge. Naturally, it would be the longest, for Mackinac is northern Michigan, the country of Paul Bunyan. For those of you unfamiliar with the Straits of Mackinac, it's a five-mile stretch of water connecting two of our Great Lakes and dividing the state of Michigan. A few years ago, when the people of Michigan revived serious talk about building a bridge across the Straits, some of the experts said, impossible. Because of the underwater terrain, the speed of the current, the Mackinac winters, they gave all sorts of reasons. But I hope they were wrong, because this bridge had been a dream, a dream that men had kindled and kept alive for over 70 years. It all started in 1883 with the dedication of the Brooklyn Bridge. William Salson, a department store owner in St. Ignace, Michigan, proposed a similar bridge for Mackinac. Few took him seriously. It was tough enough to get a boat across the straits. Gales up to 78 miles an hour have been recorded. Temperatures range from 115 above to 35 below. And when it gets cold, this is nature's deep freeze with a layer of ice as much as six feet thick. Around the turn of the century and for some years after, the railroads ran boats to move their passengers from one depot to another. Then came the ferries, which took you across with only minor inconveniences, such as waiting in line for 19 hours. Dreams began to turn into reality with the appointment of the Mackinac Bridge Authority, headed by former United States Senator Prentice M. Brown. Evidence that the authority meant business came when they engaged Dr. David B. Steinman, whose beautifully designed bridges I have seen in many parts of the world. This bridge would represent the full flower of his talent, if everything went according to plan. I just happened to be in Mackinac in 1954 when they started surveying, pinpointing exact locations of the 34 piers. And I do mean exact locations. This bridge had to be straight, and it wouldn't be if any pier was offline as much as one inch. Maybe that's why engineers are so proud of their profession the only profession where excellent isn't good enough, where every part of every job must be perfect. Those giant caissons were built in sections at American Bridges Gary, Indiana plant, shipped by rail to Alpena, Michigan to be assembled, then floated to the site of the bridge. As you can see, the caisson comes to a sharp edge at the bottom where the two cans are joined so it can cut through to bedrock as the space between cans is filled with concrete. Sinking the caissons for the towers was one of the biggest parts of the job. Remember the song we sang as kids? You all do. London Bridge is falling down. Well, the original London Bridge made of wood was always falling down. But this bridge is made of steel, including those eye bars which will anchor the giant cables that will support this bridge. While the huge caissons were being sunk, other men at Ambridge, Pennsylvania, were fabricating sections of the main towers, laying them out on the ground and bolting them together as a last check before they leave the shop. After all, it would be a little embarrassing to construct half of a tower, find a part that doesn't fit, and have to say, whoops. That didn't happen, though. In this game of bridge, the trump is know-how, and these men have it. Those twin towers rise more than 750 feet from bedrock, higher than any building in the nation outside New York City. To jump the gun on winter, to squeeze in the last possible day of work, the two giant backstay spans were assembled on shore, floated to the site, and maneuvered into position, 
a dramatically sensitive, delicate operation. In the spring of 1956, the men returned to the bridge to tackle the most spectacular part of the job, spinning the giant cables. First, though, a catwalk had to be built for the bridgemen, their private sidewalk in the sky. A sidewalk made of cyclone fencing and timber. The bounce is the thing that helps to spread the catwalk. By July, the catwalks were joined and the cable spinning could begin. The spinning wheels pass each other in the exact center of the bridge. A cowbell warns bridgemen as the wheel approaches. As the wheels complete each trip, the wires are removed and secured to the eye bars. The wheels are then reloaded and sent on their way again. The men in friendly competition worked around the clock in a battle against time, the battle to complete the cable spinning before another winter came to Mackinac. To use the racetrack phrase, it was a photo finish. In less than three months, they had to spin 42,000 miles of wire, enough to go almost twice around the world. A tough schedule. Like the pros they are, these men did the job and did it with 12 days to spare. Before the cable men leave the bridge, they compress, paint, and wrap the wires, thus making two 24 and a half inch cables. Again in the spring of 1957, the ice man leaveth and the bridge men return. They hung steel suspender ropes to support the roadway. That's why they call it a suspension bridge. The road hangs from the cables. Five miles long, four lanes wide, a modern superhighway. And speaking of modern design, look at that open floor used in the two inner lanes and the center strip. Safety plus for us motorists. The open flooring gives easy passage to the winds of Mackinac and keeps the roadway free of winter sleet and snow. Now the bridge is finished. Engineering and manufacturing know-how have joined together two parts of the Wolverine State long divided by nature enhancing the area's industrial development and opening to easy access this great mecca for sportsmen and vacationers the year round, forging what will become another strong link in our new federal system of interstate and defense highways. Designers, engineers, and bridgemen of the future will build a longer bridge, but even when they do, this this great bridge will stand as a resolute monument of steel to man's eternal urge to construct a five-mile dream come true. One last word, a word of warning. When you come to Mackinac to see this great bridge, be careful, very careful. It might make a bridge fan of you, too.